Dr. Orestes Caldwell, editor of Electronic Industries and former member of the Federal Communications Commission. I'm glad to have this opportunity to speak to you men and women in the service of America. I believe in this world to come. I think it's going to be a pretty good world. But I've been asked to tell you about television, so I'll trim the philosophizing. Television is most certainly here to stay. It's going to brighten the world of your home. But more important to many of you, it's going to create a lot of new jobs. Now, none of us like crystal gazing, so let's take a look at what is actually happening now. Nine experimental telecasting studios are already operating with pre-war equipment and skeleton staffs. While the electronic industry is busy finishing its war job, a handful of people, girls, ex-vets, older men, are keeping the television field alive, experimenting, ironing out kinks, but proving that television will definitely be part of American life when the go-ahead comes. Sight teamed up with sound to bring the world to your easy chair. Telecasting studios will be a combination of Broadway and Hollywood, and you'll get the best of both for the price of your television set and a few cents worth of electricity. And outside the studios, mobile televising units, portable stations on wheels, are now experimenting with remote pickups, getting primed to bring you on-the-spot news and history in the making. When television networks are formed, you will have a direct wire to every place a television camera can be set up. A world of sports at your fingertips. They're off. That's interpreter number two right in front. And the field races past the stand with interpreter on top. Low man in second place moving up on the outside. Mayor LaGuardia pitches the first ball. Red Ruffing is taking his time. And it's a hit. There's a capacity crowd here at Madison Square Garden tonight to witness the semifinals of the Golden Glove. Telecasting is done on a limited schedule now. But tomorrow, you will have a permanent ringside seat everywhere from Madison Square Garden to the House of Congress. You'll see transmitted by television, newsreels, and super Hollywood productions. Plays and musicals command performances in your own living room. These men at Halloran General Hospital, where there are a hundred sets, can tell you television is here to stay. Even now, without the technical improvements that will come after the war, the television picture has the quality of a good home movie. The pre-war models in use today have a small screen, but here's a practical working model with a 16 by 22 inch screen that goes into production just about the time you're being measured for civvies. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. WNBT New York. Well, that gives you a pretty general idea of what's happening. Now let's see how television works. You're going to find a new type of aerial against the skyline of America when you return. It will be up high because television waves, like light rays, don't bend and are stopped by the horizon. So the higher the aerial, the farther the waves travel. But first, what is a television wave? As you know, all objects reflect light, some more, some less, depending on their color. The white jacket of these fencers is reflecting more light than their dark trousers. The television camera lens, like an ordinary camera, picks up these differences in light and shadow. Only instead of film behind the lens, we have the iconoscope, familiarly known as Ike. The camera plate of the iconoscope is made up of millions of sensitive electric eyes. 
These eyes pick up electric impulses from the object being televised and form a picture which is then transmitted as separate electric impulses from the camera plate to the receiver screen. There the impulses are converted back to pinpoints of light and shadow to reform the picture on the screen. Here the process is slowed down for you. Actually the impulses travel from the camera to the receiving set at the rate of four million impulses a second, forming the picture in motion. Fantastic, but our children will grow up with this miracle enriching their lives and giving them a new understanding of the whole world. Gosh. Yep. By harnessing electrons and vacuum tubes, our research scientists, backed by American industry and manufacturing skill, have developed this new means of communication to the point where it promises to become a post-war billion dollar industry which can serve our nation and the world in new and wonderful ways. Let's listen to a man who knows. He is one of the great leaders in the world of electronics, Brigadier General Sarnoff, president of the Radio Corporation of America. When the First World War ended, it was my good fortune and privilege to play a part in the launching and subsequent development of a new industry called broadcasting. There were some who said it had great promise. There were others who said that it was a noisy, sputtering gadget, a passing fancy. The rest, you know. Now let us see what possibilities exist for television once the war ends. Here are the possibilities. In the manufacturing field, 60,000 men and women will be needed to make the first sets, which will retail for about $200, with 18 million Americans ready to buy them. Help wanted. Electronic experts, assemblers, wiremen, machinists, finishers, testing personnel, sheet metal workers, drill press operators, spot welders. Television is just made to order for GIs with radio and radar experience. 85,000 maintenance men are going to be needed to install and service the 30 million sets expected to be sold within the first 10 years of full-scale production. And in the distribution end of the business, 135,000 jobs are going to open up in the new shops and sales organizations that will supply the huge consumer demand. All in all, 300,000 well-paying jobs are expected to be created by television within five years after the new industry really gets rolling. Well, that's a comprehensive view of the industrial picture. Now what about television production? Here's a man who qualifies as an expert on that subject. Meet Mr. Gilbert Seldes, head of production of the Columbia Broadcasting System. They tell me that a great many of you may be interested in jobs in television production. Well, I think you're entitled to the hard, solid facts in the case. As of spring 1945, we are employing 62 people. They work a full week to put on four hours of programs on the air. That doesn't mean four hours a day, it means four hours a week. If we were on the air eight hours a day, seven days a week, we'd need at least seven times as many people in the neighborhood of 500. And we're only one studio. There are 900 radio broadcasting stations in the United States today. And it's anybody's guess how many television stations are going to spring up. We can just be sure that the faster we deliver good entertainment and good pictures, the more jobs we're going to create. And there will be a lot of jobs. You compare television with radio, for instance. Here is a radio newscaster on the air. One man in the studio, one in the control room. And here is a television newscast. And a lot of work went into it before it got this far. Now as for the movies. Here is just a medium, colossal production underway. Yes, it takes a lot of people and many months to make one. Yet commercial television will probably use more material in one week than all the studios in Hollywood turn out in a year. And finally, in the theater, you produce a show that may run for years. In television, every night is opening night and closing night, too. Now let's look at some specific television jobs. Some of them you'll see come from radio, movies, and the theater. Some are new. Here are two men doing a job never heard of before. 
They are riding the Ike. Shaders and switchers in the control room see that the pictures come out right. At the transmitter, they see that they get out on the air. And electronic experts keep it all functioning. You men with radio and radar training are only a hop, skip, and jump from the industry's need. Then there will be modifications of established professions. Writers, directors, producers, scenic designers, and just to show you wax waves and spars that this isn't exclusively a man's world, there'll be costume designing and stage management. Then behind the scenes, makeup, props, electricians, and almost everything else from carpenters to model makers. But the great thing to remember is that we've just begun to discover the possibilities of television. And these are only a few of the jobs that already exist. Many more are bound to develop as we go on. That's it. Television. And some interesting jobs which some of you may be qualified for. But more than that, television can be the window to the whole world. A medium through which the United Nations can better understand each other and live together in the world of tomorrow.